Okay, I'm back. Uh, I want to talk to you about some different ways that we look at growth in fish. The most important of which is length versus weight. And in fact, this is probably more important to us than length versus age. Eh, you, who can say what's more important, but we use this an awful lot and it affects a lot of things. Um, so now, instead of asking how big will a fish be at a given age, we're saying um, at a given length, how large do we expect the fish to be or how heavy we expect them to be. And uh, so we want to look at how weight changes as the fish gets longer. Okay, and this is also nonlinear, and it typically looks like this. So between length at age, weight at age, and length versus weight, you have three differently shaped graphs, but they all are pretty typical across species and across populations. So again, here on the x-axis, I've got total length. So this is as the fish get larger and I've got weight on the y-axis. And you can see that it's curvilinear and as fish get longer they get heavier faster. So this is kind of an exponential growth thing and we don't really see an asymptote like we did with the other relationships. Um, and so you get fish um, that are very long they can get very fat. So fish grow in sort of three dimensions and as they get longer they get heavier faster. So their growth from say 0 to 10 millimeters is not very much. Their growth from 500 to 510 millimeters in weight is very great. Although they grew the same length, um, the same amount in length, when they're larger they put on a lot more weight. And this is a very simple equation that we use to relate length and weight. It's W equals A times L to the B. And so this is a power equation which is what gives us our typical um, uh, curved relationship. Um, you usually have length and weight for a number of fish and so then again you just fit an equation to your existing data and so you have all these data you need to figure out a value of A and a value of B and then that will give you the equation for that population which tells you how fast they're putting on weight as they grow in length. A um, couple of situations if B equals 3 usually we say that fish grow in three dimensions and so roughly you can say that they put on weight at the cube of their length which again is why longer fish put on weight much faster. Um, very rarely does it equal exactly 3. If it was 3 it would be called isometric growth. If it doesn't equal 3 it's called allometric growth. And usually in fish it's about 2.8 to 3.4 but it can vary. And so if you look at how the different values of B affect the length, uh, the length weight relationship, the larger that value the faster they put on weight with length. And so if B equals 3.2, uh, which is positive uh, allometric growth, they put on weight very quickly as they get longer. If B equals 2.8, that's negative allometric growth, and they don't put on weight nearly as fast as they get longer. So that's the relationship between length and weight. So we have our, a lot of data, we measure length and weight for a lot of fish, how do we fit that curve? How do we get that value of A and that value of B? Um, well this is um, very well established and something that we're going to practice in class. So we get a large number of fish and we get length and weight on them. And if we go out in the field, what do we do when we measure our fish? We get length and weight. And then we can simply just plug them into Excel and Excel will fit the equation for us. And that's pretty simple. Um, I want to show you how to do it by yourself too, just to help you understand this equation. And the way we can do it by hand is we convert the equation to a straight line and then we solve for that straight line. Remember, getting an equation for a straight line is very simple. And the way we're going to get that straight line is to log transform things. So anytime we're working with curvilinear data, we can log transform it and that will tend to make a straight line. Straight lines are easier to work with than curved lines and that's why we do it. Remember the actual relationship 
is a logarithmic one, and so the actual data will tend to be curved. We just transform it to make it easier to work with. And so if this is our original equation, w equals a l to the b, to log transform we just take the log of both sides. And this is a base 10 log, whereas before we were using the natural log, which the base is e, which is like 2.7 something. This is base 10 logs, and if you remember, this is what you, one of the things that you use base 10 logs for, is to make it easy to solve these kinds of equations. And so we take the log of both sides, so now we have the log of w equals um, the log of a, and if you remember about base 10 logs, if you multiply two numbers, that means you add their logs. And so to convert this, we take the log of a plus the log of l, but if you also remember anything about uh, base 10 logs, if you raise something to a power, that means you multiply that power times the log. So consequently, when we log transform it, we get log of w equals the log of a plus b times the log of l. This is something that we can easily solve, and then we could just uh, take the anti-log and go back if we want to. Again, we're working with base 10 log here. Before, we were fitting a curve to natural data, um, and we tend to use the natural log for that, uh, whereas this is just trying to make this equation easier to work with, so we're going to use the base 10 log. So try to keep those two separate. Okay, and here again, that's what I'm trying to make that point, is that that's the base for natural logs, and we're using it in a different manner. That's why we have two sort of different logs. They're not the same thing. Okay, so now we have a linear equation. It's much easier to work with. That's what base 10 logs are for, to make these things easier to work with. To convert curved lines to straight lines, that's why we're doing this. So here's some real, uh, real world data. And you look at total length on the x-axis and weight on the y-axis. And the real world data you can see is curvilinear, just like I showed you before. Um, and if I wanted to fit a line to this, it's curved. You know, curved lines are difficult to work with. Computers can bang them out very quickly, but humans, we cannot. But here, I take the exact same data and I'm plotting the log of total length on the x-axis and the log of weight on the y-axis. So I took every individual fish and I just log transformed their values and then I plot the log values and you see what it does. It makes a nice straight line. And I can fit a curve to this, a straight line, very easily. So that's what we're doing. And when I do it to this particular uh, example, um, I can get the slope of that line, and the slope is 3.44, that's B. And I can see where this line is going to intercept the y-axis, and that's negative 5.91, that's the log of A. So if I wanted to solve this by hand by myself, I would just take the base 10 log of all the lengths and all the weights, make a straight line, solve for the straight line. And we can do that, and we will do that, but also we can just have the computer do this super quickly. And because this is a simpler equation than von Bernalanffy, Excel has it built in. And so we can just fit a trend line to the graph on these data, and we can just choose power or log whenever we choose what type of curve to fit. And so it's as simple as right-clicking on a graph to get Excel to fit this and to give us exactly the numbers we need. And so if I did this in Excel, I just right-click on it, and it would give me the equation that W equals 0 0.00000123 times L raised to the 3.44. And because I know what this means, I know that the slope is 3.44, uh, the A value is 0 0.000123, so we can do it that way too. Super simple. Okay, so what just happened here, we had length and weight data for a bunch of fish, and we just used the computer to fit, to give us an equation relating the weight to the length of fish for this population. Now, you give me the length, I can give you my best guess at how heavy that fish should be. And we will use this a lot, because we can talk about something called condition, which is based upon this idea, that a fish at given length 
um, has a typical weight, but they can be skinnier or lighter than, than, than that typical weight, or they can be heavier than that typical weight. And that tells you a lot about the kind of environment that fish is living in. Remember what I said about how often food is the most important uh, influence on fish growth. And if a fish is heavier at a given length than you expect, that means they're eating well and they're in good health, they're in good condition. Whereas if the fish are at, at any length, if they're skinnier than that typical weight, well then there's something wrong with the water quality, they're not getting enough food, um, something like that. So that's the utility of having this relationship. Um, and so that's kind of what oh, I'm saying in this slide here. It tells us uh, sort of how they grow. How they grow. Do they tend to put on weight fast as they grow in length? Or do they kind of stay long and skinny and, and not put on weight as fast? Um, but the real importance of this length-weight relationship is it helps us to understand condition of the fish or the relative plumpness of the fish. Okay, so just to review then what we've talked about here with fish growth, we have um, situations where we want to look at how the fish length changes as the fish get older, and at the same time we also want to know how their weight changes as they get older, and we use the von Bernalanffy equations which are given here, and then sometimes we also want to look at how the weight changes as the fish gets longer, the relationship between length and weight. And that's the equation that we have here. And um, so then that's it. That's um, what, uh, you know, let's, let's fish growth in a nutshell. Um, we're going to do a lot of equations and we're going to work with these things. Um, it's a great night. In fact, we're getting ready to go out and do a little electro fishing. Um, so that's going to be fun. And um, you guys let me know if you have any questions. We'll do some practice in Excel with these when we get a chance. And I'll see you later.